Okay, good morning everybody. We want to welcome you today to our show, Classroom 2.0 Live. And we want to welcome everybody. And we have a special guest with us today. And Lorna, if you want to just introduce them real briefly. In a moment. Um, I'm sorry, I had an update that came through and I had to turn off my update. Okay, I apologize. Um, we are going to be talking today about Twitter for Teachers. Um, I am Kim Case and I have Lorna and Constantini with us and Peggy George. And so uh, what we'd like you to do is share a little bit about yourself in a moment. And if you're new to Illuminate, I'm going to go over a few things. Uh, the first thing is we'll be asking polling questions. And you'll be um, clicking on the green check in your menu at the top to indicate yes or that you agree with that statement. Or clicking on the red X to indicate that you disagree or you're answering no to that question. Um, and again, it's up at the menu bar at the top of your screen. You won't be clicking on the whiteboard or the screen or the slide. Below that is a green hand that's facing up with um, with a, um, an arrow on it. And if you want to speak when it comes time for the audience to participate, you would click to raise your hand. And then we would um, enable your microphone to work. If you're having problems or you want to check your setup, you can click on tools and go to audio setup or audio and then follow through with the audio setup wizard. And that way you can make sure that your microphone is working when it comes to that part. Next to the hand is two or two emoticons as well as an applause. And hopefully you won't be using the thumbs down unless we're asking for um, whether you disagree or something. Next to that is on the very right is a little door. And if you are going to step away, if you click the door, it will show away and then we'll know that you're not at your computer. Below that is the chat window. And if you would like to send a message, you type your message in the window and then you'll click send. And when you're sending to the room, make sure that it shows this room. If you want to send it to a specific person or to the moderators, then you would click that drop down arrow to make the selection change. Also, you're going to want to click on your microphone button when uh, you're given the microphone to speak. And you can adjust your microphone volume as well as your speaker volume um, for the different speakers throughout the show. There are also whiteboard tools, and we're going to be using those in just a moment. Um, we're going to be using the one called the laser pointer. Now, if you cannot see all of the chat and, or you don't like the way the windows are situated, you can change your layout. You would click on View in your menu. The layouts are locked by default, so you need to click on that to remove the check mark. And then you can select any of the layouts on the right-hand side, or you can drag out each window individually if they're not locked, and you can resize them to whatever size works for your screen and your preferences. Okay, we're going to be doing some introductions if you haven't already done so um, using the whiteboard tool and the map. And you're going to be using the laser pointer. And the laser pointer is the, the blue stick with the little red starburst at the end of it. So if you would please now click on the laser pointer tool and then click on the world map, your location so that we can see where everybody is from. And you kind of have to, after you click the, um, your, to leave your starburst, then you need to kind of drag it over a little bit. It kind of goes to the left. So you may need to click on the starburst that it leaves and move it. Um, but we are seeing people from all around the world. Of course, United States and Canada and Alaska and Hawaii, and that's wonderful. And we welcome everybody. And thank you for joining today. And our audience is growing every week, and we really appreciate you getting out the word and sharing, and that you're coming to share and learn, and we all grow together. 
Now we're going to move on to poll questions. So you may need to click on your um, mouse pointer in the whiteboard tool so that you can click on your menu. But right now we would like to know, do you use Twitter for your PLN, your personal or professional, depending upon uh, learning network? And if you would please click on your menu at the top, the green check mark, if you do use Twitter to send, send status updates and to learn uh, about different events and, and tools, um, click the green check. If you do not use Twitter, then please click the red X. I'll give you a few more seconds to vote. And you vote using the menu at the top. And let me get the results for this poll. Poll question. Okay, I got disconnected for just a second. Sorry about that. And the next poll question is, do you use Twitter in your classroom? If you click um, the green check for yes at the top in your menu, and if you do not, click the red X. Kim, we weren't able to see the responses to the first question, so can you show those? Or are they gone? Yes, yeah, I sure can. I didn't know that's what no, they're not. I didn't I thought I showed it before I got connected. At least I missed them. Disconnected. That's okay. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Um thirty eight percent indicated that they do not use Twitter. Um and fifty two percent said that they do use Twitter. That was for the previous one for their personal learning network. And for this one, do you use Twitter in your classroom? Let me get those results. And 68% say they do not use Twitter in the classroom. And 10% say that they do use Twitter in their classroom. And that's great. And I guess maybe we um, could have specified to use it with students or just for yourself in the classroom, but it really doesn't matter. Um, it's great that it is being used in the classroom. Okay. Now it is time for the newbie question. And the newbie question is what is Twitter and how can I use it to support my teaching? And I'm going to pass the mic now over to Lorna to introduce our special guest for today and answer the newbie question and then get into Twitter for Teachers. Lorna? Thanks very much, Kim. I want to thank all the participants in, in the session. I'm just ecstatic to see 100 people who found time this morning to, to be with us. It's really exciting to see that the show is continuing to, to grow. This is a section of the show that we, we call it newbie, and I like to call it those who are less experienced, because I don't think we're new to technology. And we try to uh, give those people who aren't familiar with the tools that we're talking about some kind of comfort level. So it is of about a, a bit of a basic um, point that we start. Uh, I want to uh, thank our uh, special guest, Rod Lucier, who's with us today. Rod and I are both from uh, Ontario, Canada. I'm from St. Catharines, Ontario, and Rod is from Kamoka, which uh, even though I live in St. Catharines, I wasn't sure where it is, and it's uh, a few miles out uh, west of uh, London, Ontario, which is southwestern Ontario. Uh, Rod is uh, 
in charge of e-learning with the Ministry of Education with six, 16, pardon me, 16 district school boards in Ontario. So he has some a wealth of information and experience to bring with him. You'll know Rod uh, online as the clever sheep, and I have this unabated admiration. I follow him like crazy, and in fact, he's one of the first people that I actually met on Twitter. So it's kind of uh, uh, exciting the fact that our connections are, are manifested in the tool that we're going to be talking about today. But uh, I'm going to challenge uh, Rod to a couple of questions. He has a PowerPoint show that he's going to take us through and talk about, about his experiences. And as we get closer to the end of the show, then we'll be giving people the opportunity to come to the mic and share their experiences. Or if you're not getting to the mic, then please drop any links into resources that you're using. So. Thanks again, and I would like to again give Rod a chance to say hello. So go ahead, Rod. Well, hello, and thanks so much for the invitation. I've been following what's been going on over here at Classroom 2.0 for the last year, almost year and a half now, and it's just very exciting, and uh, I'm very pleased to be invited to participate today with you. And I just want to clarify something uh, in my introduction. I'm not really in charge of e-learning, and I actually work okay. with the Ministry of Education here, and uh, I actually work with the boards down here in southwestern Ontario, and some of my colleagues are here that I see uh, from Windsor and from Waterloo, um, and, and just trying to help them make the, use, make the best use of the tools that are available. So uh, I'm really a support person rather than a know-it-all person. Well, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't clear, but thanks very much for bringing that to our attention. And uh, so let's start with the first question, Rod. What is Twitter? Well, twi the the answer can be uh, an hour long, or it can be five seconds long. Twitter is a tool that allows people to send short messages to people who choose to follow those updates. And in general, people respond to the question, "What are you doing?" But that's the short answer. The long answer includes a whole lot more of that, and um, I'd like to share um, share that when we get to the presentation. Okay, well, I I know often I've had people challenge me, um, not as a, well people in the education sector, and people who are who are not connected to the schools. Like, well, I want I want to know anything about who had a cup of coffee today, and so it is sometimes really difficult to transfer the experiences that we have with someone who is completely foreign to the. Uh, the application. So what might you say, Rod, to someone who, who gave you that kind of reaction? Well, it, it's something that truly you can't, you can't understand how attractive a communication tool it is until you use it. And explaining it as you know, something where you send short messages telling what you do, there's not a lot of excitement around that. But when you share information about what you're doing in your personal and professional life, you build relationships with people. And it's these relationships that are the real powerful force behind Twitter, whether those are, are relationships that are very thin, where people just sort of track what you do and sort of scavenge the loose bits of valid information and important things you leave behind, or there are people that you communicate more directly with. Um, and Twitter actually, as well as being a sort of a public broadcast tool that everyone can follow what you say, it can also be a very private and professional communication tool between small groups of people or individuals. That works for me. Now, I think it's a really good lead in. Did, did you want to try now going into this slideshow? Why don't we do that? And uh, I'm going to share a link here. We tried to. Um, upload the presentation earlier, and it's a little bit large. So what I'm going to suggest is that the link that I just pasted in is to um, a place on SlideShare where I've put the presentation. Don't be uh, thrown off by the uh, number of slides in the presentation. They're actually really short nuggets of slides. And what that will do if you open up another window is it will allow you to browse along with us. And I'll reference what slide we're on by counting numbers or referencing something in the slide so you know where we are. But you'll also have the opportunity, if you want to, to download the full version of that slideshow if for some reason you wanted to use it or share it with other folks. So we'll give a, people a minute to get that, um, get that link open. And Lorna, Lorna I guess um, if we have questions that come up as we go through this presentation, I may not be so alert. So maybe some of the other moderators can keep an eye and interrupt me if we get questions. Does that sound reasonable? That's exactly what we do, Ron. Go right ahead. So we're going to try okay. desktop sharing. At the, we're going to try desktop sharing at the same time. Uh, do we want to try that? Uh, you, you walk me through it, and I can do it. And uh, let me see. I know one of these is desktop sharing up here. 
the uh, icon to the rest, the, to the, the right globe? of the screen with the little hand. The, see the, no, the little hand. There's a blue screen, and there's a yeah, uh, the white, the, the white bar with the hand. So you want to click on that, so, and you'll go so right gonna, to your I'm desktop. Share my desktop. Yes. So if you open up your PowerPoint on your desktop, we can follow that. And if it's going to take us too long, then we'll be quite happy to use the external. I hope people uh, will understand <coughs> as we use this Illuminate forum. Excuse me, format. We find some restrictions or things that didn't quite work. In fact, for ten minutes, Rod and I were sort of holding our breath about getting in here. So um, we'll try it both ways. Let's try this. Can you see that? I'm seeing your desktop, and you're ready to go. If you want to play, let me just. Isn't it uh, the PDF? Okay. Well, this is the, this is the, I'm I'm using the PDF because I had to swap computers at the last minute. Um, but if you can see this or follow along with the slides and alert us if you're having difficulty, and we'll try and uh, go at a pace that's that's reasonable. I'll just point out the the title. I tr was trying to get a title for this presentation and settled on why is the fail whale smiling. And the fail whale is a, a picture that shows up in Twitter. Those of you that have used Twitter over the last year, you know that there are periods of time when many people are on. And you simply can't post feeds or retrieve feeds. And there's this image, uh, the, the actual artist who drew it, I have some information on her that I've missed. It's on my other computer. But uh, this little whale icon, a cartoon drawing, uh, pops up on the screen. But it's this little happy whale being lifted up out of the water. And, and my hope is that at the end of this presentation, you'll have an understanding of why this whale might be smiling when you see the types of communication that are taking place on Twitter. So. Really, the presentation is going to be what is Twitter all about, and I'd like to show you that by sharing some examples of the types of communications that people do on Twitter. So, moving on to uh, slide three, basically, I want to acknowledge that we know everyone is busy, uh, and I think at the end of this, if you're not already engaged in using Twitter, you might want to make time to communicate in very short messages, always under 140 characters. So I just want to the make first mention, part of this presentation is, I'm sorry. I just want to interrupt you for a second. I want to make sure everyone, if they want to um, put your uh, whiteboard, oh, I can't talk whiteboard on full screen. You need to check up to the bottom of your top of your menu bar. The third one from the left is white, and if you click on that, you're going to get a, a drop-down menu. If you choose whiteboard only, the slideshow will take over your your full screen. So that would be an option because some people might find that it, their uh, slideshow is constrained. Go ahead. Uh, Jenny Z wants, uh, uh, is Jenny Z, should I give control to Jenny Z? I'm going to say no to that because I don't know what that's about. Are we okay? So I'm going to go ahead then. So I've got a section of slides that just identify what Twitter. The first time you encounter Twitter, this is kind of what you think it is. It's people telling stories. So I'll just give you a chance to look at this first slide of a picture of uh, pizza and a glass of wine. Smart man, yes. Or it's people um, sharing their passions. Uh, it's spring training. My brother was just telling me he was down at a Tiger game. And Florida, and I missed out, but I can't wait to, to connect with other people that are Tiger fans. And regardless of the habits or hobbies that you have, I mean, we may all have education in common, but it doesn't matter what you have in common, you're able to connect with other people that share that interest. Now, just recently on CBC Radio, actually yesterday, I was tweeting about trying to find an older person because what ends up happening on Twitter is we end up communicating with a lot of people that are generally like us. And one of the ways to enrich your, your stream within Twitter is to find people that are unlike you. So there was this uh, grandparent over, I believe, in Italy who on CBC Radio, her story was being shared. She's granny mentally, but uh, really sort of wakens you up to um, some issues beyond what you're used to reading about. Now we share a whole lot. This is one of the one of the one of the reasons people come to Twitter and they sit on the sidelines and they just sort of collect 
information from people. Uh, and initially, if you're new to Twitter, this is a great way to learn about what's possible out there, is just to see what people are talking about by following interesting people. And then by collecting the, the links and the information that they share that way. So that's what teachers generally do on Twitter, is share a lot of information. So things like uh, blogs, and as well as sharing links to blogs, people actually use Twitter as a way to promote their writing. So if you've just made a, a recent post, be it a podcast or a blog, you post a little note on Twitter, and however many people may follow you, they're going to be able to have quick and ready access to your content. But if you find something really cool, be it a video, you, you send out the link, and really, like a virus, it spreads through the Twitter sphere and everybody gets access to it. With regard to education links, it's, it's another, another great way to stay on top of things. And one of the things that I didn't actually reference in the presentation is the fact that as well as posting these types of links and resources, you can actually ask people to share with you links and resources. So if you're looking for something about the Oregon Trail, you have people who are following you that just may at hand have access to a link or a resource or know of something that you don't. And that whole hive mind can send information your way to help you out. So that's kind of what, what happens with regard to sharing. Other things that we do on Twitter are celebrate good news. And we celebrate bad news too, but let's start with good news. Um, this is a, a tweet that my brother Tom sent out. He's Fog Tom. And those in Canada might know, if you follow CBC Radio 3, his uh, Fog Lounge in Windsor, Ontario was recently voted the best Canadian venue for seeing live music. And he actually leveraged Twitter to win that CBC Radio competition because he was telling his followers that CBC was running the contest and getting them to vote. His venue only holds 40 to 60 people. Uh, but he has terrific live music, independent music from across Canada. And his following on Twitter actually helped push him over the edge to win this national competition. But we also celebrate really big events, like the inauguration of President Obama. And in fact, if you were following on Twitter, Throughout the day, there were quotes like this from people that were watching it on television, from people who were listening to it, from people who were actually there. Now, like Obama's story was news, other news is also breaking on Twitter. And it's actually become probably the fastest way to tell a story. So over, some of you may be familiar with a, a website called Pirate Bay, which actually provides links to downloads of music and media and movies. And Pirate Bay was on trial over in, where are they at? In Sweden, I believe. And actually at the event, there's a whole bunch of people that are there that are tweeting about the trial. But actually while the trial was going on, one of the people who was charged actually was tweeting, the story I read was tweeting from the question box when they were actually being questioned. So news is coming directly to everybody who wants to get it to, as it happens, really as it happens. So events like this uh, launched last night, uh, the NASA, um, what's the name of it, Kepler. Um, went into space. But we also were able earlier this year to follow the Mars rover as it was digging around. And uh, tweets from NASA were actually giving updates. We're able to watch news when it, an airplane crashes on the Hudson River. We're able to see it. The first photos came up on Twitter. And uh, the news people followed on that. So it's really the place where stories are breaking. So whether you live in California and you're fighting fires, uh, or the the governor of California wants to broadcast a question to you. You can follow the governor of California, or you can follow people who live in California that can tell you day-to-day -day -day goings on there. Now, beyond people, what's happening is companies are finding out that the online world of Twitter is a great place to be present. I found this out uh, earlier this year when I stayed at a hotel, and I sent this tweet. The Four Points in St. Catharines, really nice place. Uh, I, I have to go back there again. Next time I'm in the neighborhood, I'm definitely going to stay there. But within about a half an hour of sending this tweet, I was actually followed and sent a, a message from the Four Points, 
They actually are out there searching the types of things that are being said about their products. So if you're a company from Coca-Cola to a denim company to a company that sells homes, uh, following what people are saying about you on Twitter, it's really uh, an excellent business strategy. And some companies go the route of actually uh, hiring people to actually sell the message of their company. So Geek Squad at um, Best Buy, for example. But if you were to post something about the Kindle or any other technology product, you can bet that someone at the company is actually looking at the feeds to see what you're saying about the product. So it's, a, it's a, actually a way to communicate with the people that are making things for us as well. Now, I mentioned earlier that people on Twitter, we sort of tend to hang around with people that are like us and the people that were drawn to this quick instant communication largely were the people that were into technology. Uh, and there's a need to broaden the people that are communicating there because we don't have all the answers. We, we have sometimes a narrow view and we may be very excited about technologies, but there are other things in the world that uh, whether it's cooking, whether it's uh, sports, whether it's literature, there are things that other people can communicate if they leverage this tool. So whether students or teachers are busy, no matter how busy people are, people seem to be able to find time to do short little tweets that take only 140 characters. And what's interesting to me is I was on Twitter an, uh, a year and a half ahead of my kids. Um, this is one of the rare technologies where classroom teachers learning about it at education conferences and such have actually leaped over the generation that we're teaching. It's very rare right now in, for technology to go to teachers before it goes to students. But in many cases, this is one where that is happening. But there are students out there that are gravitating towards Twitter. And with people like Britney Spears and other uh, media types uh, going on there to share the minutia of their lives, it's only going to continue to grow. So what, why else be on Twitter? In part, because it's fun. It's fun to engage with other people. Here are just a couple of examples of that. Uh, I think it was about, uh, what day was this? February 11th. Uh, there was a, a meme, a meme, a, a story, a, a way of behaving online that sort of blitzed through Twitter. And one of the stories was this imagication uh, meme, an idea that no matter where you were, you could actually think for a minute about being on vacation and you could share that story with other people through Twitter. And so working in a cubicle or working in a classroom suddenly could be a little bit more interesting and exciting. The tweem of uh, that maybe you shouldn't be on Twitter uh, is another one that went through that was kind of fun and really people making fun of themselves and their own characteristics and the way they use Twitter and the way it's kind of habit forming. Uh, but fun ways of communicating are also part of the story. The rich and famous are starting to come to Twitter and right now a lot of it is people who used to be rich or famous who are sort of trying to get heads up on things. Uh, but people like Brent Spiner of Star Trek He's actually quite funny, uh, the things that he has to say, um, really irreverent and a number of times his tweets will be boom, 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 one after the other. But he's new to Twitter following on LeVar Burton and uh, Wesley Crusher, I forget the young guy who plays Wesley Crusher. But they sort of hang out together and have learned together to leverage Twitter and it's been very interesting to watch Star Trek Next Generation community come to it. But we've also got athletes, uh, the real Shaq, who actually his spelling is really quite interesting and the types of things that he talks about are very interesting. But he is bringing other athletes to Twitter. So Chris Bosch of the Toronto Raptors is on there and is renowned for communicating when he wants a new restaurant to attend, to go to and that type of thing. But there are some really fun people to find there. Uh, whether it's around the holidays or otherwise, you get some really neat uh, tweets from Santa Claus 25. or from Darth Vader. Uh, Star Trek's big in my family, so knowing what Darth Vader's up to gives me a smile every once in a while. So beyond fun, what are educators doing? Uh, how are we leveraging Twitter and how might the future of Twitter be leveraged? Um, George Siemens is one of the people that 
has been using Twitter. He's one of many Canadian educators who's out there on this public speaking circuit. But an example of the type of communication that teachers are doing on Twitter that you might witness if you follow the right people is an invitation to attend a live online lecture, kind of like this online tutorial on Twitter. But these are happening all the time at conferences all around the world. And the invitations to peek at what's going on, be it by video, by tuning into a text chat, or by following the tags that people are using at a particular conference, those invitations are coming through Twitter. And people like Alec Kouros uh, out at the University of Regina are, are, are finding ways to build collaboration into their classes. So they're actually opening their classroom to participation and partnering up their students, in this case students who are trying to become teachers, partnering them up with other educators and mentors around the world. But people are using Twitter to send short messages to prepare, prepare conferences, to prepare uh, podcasts, to collaborate on all kinds of projects. And if you're familiar with um, Smart Mobs, the author, Howard Reingold, is on Twitter. And you know, there's good and bad that can come from Twitter. And one of the things that can happen in Twitter really quickly, and one of the ways that it took off down at South by Southwest, which is just about to kick off again, I understand, is that uh, a person can go to a particular restaurant and say, hey, it's time for a party. And everyone on that person's follow stream, if they happen to be at the event, they all show up. Uh, the same thing can happen at an education conference where someone says, where, where are we going for dinner? And the responses are tweeted. Well, everyone's aware of what's going on. So uh, collective action can take place. You've seen some of this happen where um, a whole bunch of people will gather in a public space uh, like uh, the train station, Union Station in New York City or Toronto, and everyone did the, the old freeze. They, they, they moved in without moving, held their place for five minutes, for example. And a few hundred people doing that at a common time, just because they were triggered, uh, by a simple text message. Uh, the other thing about this mob action and the ability to use text messages is that you don't need a computer to do it. Uh, I, have, I had some other slides referencing the fact that you can actually, I mean, use a phone. You can actually tweet from wherever you are. Um, but that ease of having that communication and those people following you and the people that you keep track of with you wherever you go, it changes the game um, with regard to how we use computer technology. Other ways that we use Twitter, if you need help, why not crowdsource it and get the people that you work with to help you out? So suggestions like this one could be followed up by a developer. I'm on slide 43 if every, anybody's having difficulty keeping track of where we're at. Or a request like this, trying to find an apartment. This is the most common type of question that we're sort of seeing in, in Twitter amongst educators. In showcasing what Twitter can do, there's a real wow effect if you can get an instant response from people who might be in your personal learning network. So a lot of people who introduce t Twitter to teachers, they'll post something like, tell me why you use Twitter, or say hi to so all these folks who are learning about Twitter. And you have the opportunity to respond to that person as a reply. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a way to respond, and uh, we might talk about that in a little bit. But the people that are calling for people to send requests like this, even though these are the experts in using Twitter, there are more powerful ways we could do this because uh, people that ask, for example, what's the why do you use Twitter? If someone was to actually use a keyword or a hashtag, as it's called in Twitter, use this keyword to identify the response that people give, and everyone was just to, to, to include that tag, a tag such as um, good Twitter. I don't know. <laughs> That's a terrible tag. But good Twitter. If everyone used that phrase and then said why they use Twitter, you could search that tag, good Twitter, and you'll find all of these messages. But again, we can talk about that in a few minutes. On slide 46, um, one of the things I mentioned that, that goes through Twitter like wildfire is memes. So last year, the whole concept of edupunk, whether you were edupunk or you knew one, it was a discussion that you got to be engaged in. So this communication tool, I mentioned at the top, one of the reasons I think it's really popular is because you learn about the people that you're communicating with beyond just the personal. Um, home life, you're learning the work life, you're learning the composite of what they're thinking at any given time. So we're building relationships with people. 
and you're learning whether someone has a sunny outlook, whether they're going to have a great day, whether they're stressed out. You're learning if they're relaxed. You're learning if they're in a really neat place. And there are some um, security concerns around some of these things because you can send messages that point out exactly where you are. And there are ways within um, tools like the iPhone to track where exactly people are tweeting from so you know where they are. And if you know where they are, you also know where they are not. So their home, for example, might be left vacant. But the messages in people that you're interested in and that you're sort of growing to know, they're really compelling, interest, compelling messages when you get to know the people over a period of time. So if you're new to Twitter, one of the big questions is, how do I find people? So the, the tail end of this uh, little presentation is about some ways that I know you can find interesting people. And if you're new to it or you're experienced at using it, some of these may be new to you as well. And the first point is that on Fridays, um, there's actually a, a, a tag that's, that's attached. And I'm going to point out the, the use of a hashtag. So in the bottom uh, corner of this tweet, I'm on slide 52, you'll see the last word has got a hash num number sign and the word follow Friday. That code or that keyword is used by tweeters all around the world on Friday to identify people who are good people that you might want to follow. So if you're looking for people to follow, you can actually search and find other people that use that word and then find users that are identified in a tag like that. Uh, but it happens on Fridays, but you can, you can also follow any of these people by clicking on their name and then just clicking the follow button. It's that simple to keep track of people in Twitter. You can also, uh, although I don't mention it in the slideshow, you can actually follow anybody's followers. So when you follow any one of those people and you click on their name, you actually have access to all of the people that they follow and all of the people that follow them. So you can scroll down their list and find some interesting folks to follow if you're getting started. Another way to find people, I think this is the most entertaining thing on Twitter, is uh, Some Eyes was a company that actually used to track what was going on in Twitter. And Twitter bought it and put it into a little search engine called search.twitter.com. You can go there and put in phrases for just about anything and find them. So if you put, I'm a plumber in there in quotation marks and search, you'll only get tweets that say, I'm a plumber in the quote line. So you'd actually find people who, who, who are plumbers. If you want to find out what people are saying about um, boys and reading, you can use those words in a search. Or if you want to hear what parents are thinking about students, you might put my child's teacher as a search item, and you'll find some really radical things that people are saying. It's really, um, I think, one of the most underutilized tools for tracking what's going on in Twitter. And I actually used it to find a number of the quotes that are used in this presentation. Uh, Mr. Tweet is one of the people you might want to follow on Twitter. And if you follow Mr. Tweet, um, this character, this, um, I don't know if it's, I, th I don't think it's a real person. I think it's a software um, program that will actually analyze the types of things you tweet about and the types of people you're connected to. And then it will recommend other people that you might find interesting to follow. And that, that will actually be tweeted to you periodically. So you just click a link and then you can follow folks. Now, if you're brand new to Twitter, um, here's a little brief advertisement. I'm trying to write this book. I put this tweet out four weeks ago. I thought, wouldn't it be neat to write a book that outlined what's Twitter all about? And I invited people on Twitter to join up. And within the first uh, eight to 10 days, we had 100 people who were helping to write this ebook on Twitter for teachers. It's still got a long way to go. And a lot of people have come to learn and pull information. But anybody is welcome to come in and help edit this wiki. You simply sign up. There's instructions on the page. It's at twitterforteachers.com. And if you want to know about hashtags, how to find followers, how to use Twitter with students in your classroom, how to use Twitter to expand your personal learning network, all of these suggestions are actually being embedded in this ebook, which may or may not stay in wiki format. So that's kind of a, an introduction of what all this information that's going on and being communicated in Twitter. So the question is, do you know why the fail whale is smiling? I don't know that I have an answer that we need to answer, just to know that there's some cool things going on in Twitter. And where it's gone is not exactly where the developers thought it's gone. It's gone far beyond what are you doing 
to a whole lot more. And I just want to take a minute to reference a number of the photos that I've, I've used for this presentation. These are all photos that are Creative Commons licensed at Flickr.com. I used CompFight to actually locate them. And the last slide, number 58, is if you want to get in contact with me after this presentation, um, or if you want to read what I write about, or if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, my details are all there on that last slide, slide number 58. Um, so I didn't sort of hear myself interrupted, so I hope we were still connected. I still see a green chalk going on. Um, but uh, let me see. Lorna, should I, should I close that, or how do I close that, or what should we do with that now? Do you remember we had the... Uh discussion about the, again, it's the whiteboard with a hand under it, the top one. should take the slide sharing off. You're good. There you uh, go. Okay. Boy, you know that what? I cannot. A, a, sorry. Yeah. No, go ahead. I was just going to say that seemed to me to be a whole lot of talking. That's not generally how I like to teach, but uh, those are kind of the messages. I think the quotes sort of uh, shared a lot of the message that I wanted to share with people. Well, I know, Rod, you're in a different kind of form, form than the regular classroom, but I just have to tell you, that is such a fantastic presentation. It was so to the point and so clear. And those images are, are wonderful. You're getting applause in the in the chat room. I, I know that everyone's going to be going over to SlideShare and capturing the information you have here because it was just phenomenal. And, and look at the chat room. We have a lot of people, including my ringing phone, who want to um, ask you some questions. So maybe Kim can take over. Sure. The, uh, and I mic. also, um, I sure can. And I also wrote down a few questions from the audience. Um, and I forgot who, Rod, but somebody asked, what are the safety implications for students? So if you could address that. Yeah, uh, the thing about Twitter feeds, they're, they're, it's a microblogging platform, so anything that you write is public and is searchable. The only way to communicate privately is to use, um, actually fo folks who are new to Twitter might not know this, but you use the letter D in front of a space and then the person you want to communicate directly to. That's the only way to communicate privately. If you post any other way, then your tweets are entirely uh, public. So. Uh, think of a young college student or a high school student who publishes and says, I'm going for a walk by myself now, or I'm going out to uh, meet so-and-so at the such-and-such. -such. Um, people could um, take that information and sort of intervene in that person's life if it's in a public, um, public timeline. So there are risks associated with it if you don't know who is following you. So there are ways to set your feed up so that people can't follow you without your permission. And if you're ever working with students using Twitter, that's one thing that I would recommend. The other is that um, there's a tool out there called Edmodo. You can follow Zemote, Z-E-M-O-T-E, -E, who's responsible for that tool. And it's actually a tool that was designed for safe use within the classroom. Um, but that's kind of where I, where I wanted to bring the attention to. When you tell information about yourself, you don't know who's reading that information. And if you give information that's a little too personal, then other people could uh, potentially take advantage of it. We've seen stories in the news about uh, just the other day, someone was tweeting about something that was, um, there was a security thing at one of the universities in the United, in the United States. There was a, a lockdown because someone had a weapon. Well, it went through Twitter lightning quick. And very good things can happen from that type of communication. But similarly, uh, people knowing where people are at any given time might have uh, ramifications too. There was another question. I know you were keeping track of them. I'm not following up. This is a discussion about hashtags is still really good. Is it possible for you to demonstrate that? Yeah, well, can we, can we do that? Cause, uh, um, yes, actually, I was going to open I, up my tweet deck, if that's OK, Rod, or you can yeah. open up no, you go ahead. a web. And you can just tweet, keep talking. Tweet. Yeah, do you, you, I don't know if, uh, what people use to receive Twitter, but one of the things about Twitter is that um, it's got an open API, uh, which means other, other companies are welcome to use the information that Twitter has about how it collects and shares information. So there are a number of ways of actually tracking what's going on in Twitter. One of the tools that you can use is TweetDeck, but there are many others. And if you're curious and don't know what, where to start, again, I'd recommend going over to Twitter for Teachers, where we have uh, outlined a number of what these tools are. 
Um, but in a tweet deck or in search.twitter.com, you can actually do a search for a hashtag. And the hashtag, again, is that number symbol from the telephone and then a keyword. So you can see here there's a conference, actually, uh, that retweet at the bottom, uh, NIM09. That's likely a conference event. And so people who are at that conference, if they're tweeting from a conference and they use that tag, then all of those tags can be viewed um, and collected on TweetDeck or on another uh, resource. Maybe you can do a search for that tag so we can see what other people said when they were there at NIM09. Can we try that? And in, tweet, in TweetDeck, it'll open a new panel. So um, is this Kim that's doing this or Peggy? Yes, it's me, Kim. Okay. okay. Uh, so if you scroll to the right, is your column there for, um, I can't see it on the screen here. Let's see. If you use the scroll bar at the bottom, you can see it, but I, oh, that I can scroll. all the way scroll to the right. Right, very good. So if everyone has scrolled to the right, you'll see that everyone who was at that event used that tag at the end of all of their little tweets. And so it became searchable. So you could see what everybody was saying at that event. That's true for just about any conference. But it's also true for people who might be watching The Bachelor who might say, use the tag <laughs> Bachelor with a number sign. Or people who are watching the Super Bowl who put hashtag Super Bowl. Or people who are watching the inauguration who use the hashtag yes. inaug. Uh, so you can actually um, use hashtags to communicate with other people and ensure that your tags are collected. And this is one of the things that I, I mentioned when, when people are trying to introduce Twitter to people. If you ask people, tell us why you use Twitter. Well, if we had a hashtag around that and people's responses to it, we'd be able to collect everybody's response to what they said they use Twitter for. And then people who are new to Twitter could search that hashtag and find out all kinds of reasons that people use it. Well, that's that's a great explanation, and uh, thanks, Kim, for putting up your tweet deck. You, you can see all the people that you actually network with. And we have 10 minutes left uh, to the close of our show. I just wonder if we want to give some of the microphone to um, ask a question or make a comment about something they're doing with uh, Twitter. So if, if someone wants to come to the microphone, just raise your hand, and uh, Kim will give you the microphone to uh, to talk. So if anyone wants to come to the microphone. No brave souls. <laughs> there we go. I see Mary, Mary Ellen. Okay. Okay, Mary Ellen, go ahead. You have the microphone? The microphone? Can you hear me? I sure can. I think she may we have double clicked the mic. Yeah. yeah. Click the microphone Click the icon. Microphone so icon so there you go. There you go. Sue Waters from Edubox um, <clears throat> asked her Twitter friends to pop past my blog about a month ago. And within about an hour, I had like 30 comments on my blog, my first grade classroom blog from all over the world. It was just so amazing and exciting. Yes, she's a, an excellent role model and person to follow on Twitter because she has a large following and is very knowledgeable. And she can help generate people to your blog as well. Thank you, Mary Ellen. Can we give Steve the microphone, Kim? Um, Yes, D. Waitman, did you have a question that you'd like to ask? No, before him is Steve. Steve's number one there. Oh, oh, okay. Mine isn't floating up to the top, so I've got to go find him. Okay, I got him. Go ahead, okay, Steve. Thank you. We see your mic is live. Go ahead, Steve. Can, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can. Go ahead. Yes, we can. Go ahead. Great. This is Steve from Boston. And my question has to do with 21st century learners. And the world that we're in right now is so focused towards technology and trying to bring our kids uh, um, around, around the world kind of up to speed um, in becoming thinkers and learners of skills and content. Um, and so my question is for, for everybody, how do you see Twitter fitting in with that idea of having 21st century learners? I have one thing that I, I have suggest to vote. Huh? Um, we, we, um, we, we have to realize that this communication that this tool is something, that people, is something that people can use any time, any time. Excuse me, Rod. I think Rod, Rod, Mike, I think Steve, can you turn your Mike, microphone off, please? Microphone off, please? Yeah, I, I thought that echo That's sounded better. funny. <laughs> but the idea that, that these tools allow us to communicate with the entire world at just a moment's notice uh, is something that should change classroom education you know, dramatically. What we do in general in schools is we say we don't want your cell phone in because it's too much of a distraction from the real important learning that's going on, which is what the teacher has to share. Um, and to realize that whether it's looking for an answer from somebody uh, or getting information that gives a global perspective, these tools are really, really valuable for instant communication anytime, any place. And in general, we try to restrict the use of tools that have that ability to communicate anytime, any place. So as a teacher, I think it's really important to try to have a, have a reason for using these tools before ever using them with students. And the only way to see the power in using them is to use them yourself first. So introducing Twitter to your class, if you've been using Twitter for a few weeks, is probably not a good idea. Using Twitter with a class after you've used it for a number of months and have seen different things that can be done with it might be worth making a case to your principal about uh, using it on a limited basis. You know, can I just talk briefly about Turn one ahead. other thing about this, this 21st century learner? We've also got parents that are 21st century parents who have access to cell phones and technology and you know the, the, the uh, Blackberry and all of that that they take with them. What if we were to use Twitter as a classroom teacher to say, send out what the homework was for the day? So a teacher was to say, um, here's, here's the task for the day, homework, send that off as a Twitter feed from Mrs. Jones' grade 5 class. And people could subscribe to that information, be that students receiving that information or parents receiving that information. It's really a tool that in the 21st century can allow us to communicate other than learning, but can actually be used for management at a school level. What a great idea. What a great idea. I love your parent comment. So I know we have one more um, hand up there. I think if we could give it, I'm going to have to stop at D. Wait, man, because we're almost to the end. And I know Kim has a few um, announcements that she has to make. So Kim, if you just want to give uh, D. Whiteman the mic, and we'll have to say that's the other question. I know, Donna, can you type your question in the chat room, please? We lost Kim, so I guess I am going to do the microphone myself because we've lost Kim from this session. There we go. Go ahead, D. White. Maybe you're Thanks on your so microphone. Much. Uh, I just I just started using uh, Twitter last weekend. I was at a conference that I see Doug and a few others that are here today are using. Uh, the question I, I I really like the comment. You have to start using it yourself in order to really see the application. And my wife thinks I'm addicted to this uh, Twitter all of a sudden. But I guess the question I have is, uh, what's it going to take to get school boards in the same headspace? Uh, I've got it blocked on my network, and I'm sure others are suffering from the same problem. Hey, I'd love to an know answer the answer to that him? question. <laughs> I'd love to know the answer to that question. I, I, you know what? The people that are making decisions around these tools don't use them. Um, and I think one of, the, one of the ways that we can actually help our own case is to introduce the decision makers to these tools and show them how they can connect to colleagues within their school board, outside of the school board, um, family members, that type of thing. Uh, but unless they see the power and potential of the tools, uh, they're going to block what is to them unknown. So I think that's an important step. 
they don't have the vocabulary. They really don't. And so when they get the vocabulary, and they, as you said, they speak, then they can do it. So, but we are um, three minutes to go, and I do want to give Kim uh, some announcement time. Personally, I, I want to thank you. Um, on a, as I said on personal note, Rod, for participating in, and providing with it some tr tremendous resources that uh, we can go off and use and present to those people who don't have the vocabulary. Thank you very much, Rod, for being with us. That was a great pleasure. Thanks a lot for the invitation, Lorna, and the rest of the team. Yes, thank you, thank Kim, you, you so can much, take Rod. This has been This has been great. Um, next week, on March the 14th, we're going to be talking about Moodle. What is Moodle and why do you want to use it? And we're going to be talking about using Moodle in the in the classroom. And we're going to have our special guest, Miguel Dolan. And he's from San Antonio, Texas, where I'm from. So I work with him and he's a great friend of mine. So please join us on the March the 14th at the same time. Um, I'm going to put in the survey link. And if you would please Click on the survey link and access the survey. The survey link, um, I'm not sure if it's in the share tab or not, but we would appreciate your feedback and we uh, anything that you can share that you want to share with us would be great. And you can also leave feedback on the website, the live website. Each of these, uh, we put all of the show information and resources in our archive page at the live show site. And you can give us feedback on shows or ask questions or well about the links. And um, right now, I want to let you know about the future of education is another new community that was started by Steve Harkadon, who also started the classroom 2.0 uh, name. And there are several live webinars that he helps produce in conjunction with PBS Teachers and Knowledge Works. On March the 11th, coming up this Wednesday, Thomas Fry will be talking about the future of education. Radical shifts are about to begin. That will begin at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And remember, tonight is um, daylight savings time to fall back. I guess turn your clock back an hour. So make that adjustment. And next week, um, the 18th, there's going to be a session remixing Shakespeare for 21st century students at 8 p.m. And those will be in Illuminate. And the information to, and the links can be found at futureofeducation.com. And there will be Illuminate links on um, the Future of Education site so that you can join Steve. And we want to give a special thanks to Rod today for being our guest. And uh, Steve Hargadon, who is the founder of 2.0, Classroom 2.0 and Future of Education. Thank you so much to everybody who participated today and who came and joined us. We had over 131 people uh, join us today. And we thank you for spreading the word, sharing your tweets on Twitter and on Plurk. And we especially want to thank Luminate for providing this forum for us so that we can share and learn and spend time together every Saturday. And we just thank you for coming today. And we look forward to March the 14th. If you have questions, uh, feel free to email one of us or email Rod. You can also reach us on Twitter. And there's more information, and the recording links will be posted on the live show site um, later today, possibly tomorrow, with the chat log and all of the information that you're going to need. And if you'd like to put your Twitter name in the chat uh, window, then the people that are watching the recording can access and add the followers at a later time. And again, we thank you, everybody, for coming today. And we look forward to seeing you next Saturday and watching your tweets on Twitter.
Thank you all so much for joining us. We're getting ready to close out the session. So if you will log out, then we'll be able to start the recording of this session. Thanks a lot, and have a great day.